Welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. You can see we have some snow. Uh, we were, were kind of expecting it to maybe melt a bit, but uh, it's supposed to be sunny today. It's overcast. But today's the day we're going to put Carl in with the girls. So we've been uh, moving some of the animals around and putting some of the, uh, the little ones in the barn. And uh, here we go. All right, Carl. Carl's been pretty excited, as you can see. <laughs> you got the broken fence too. Yeah, he uh, he broke part of the fence the other day. <laughs> Tara, inform me where is the uh, fence that he broke? Right oh yeah. <laughs> hey girls, right here. He's been, I guess, bashing it. And of course the girls have been uh, taunting him. Poor boy. Look at them all lined up and ready. Okay, so gestation period of goats are 150 days. So that should put us into the end of March. Look at that lip. What do you think? What do you think, buddy? <laughs> Okay, here we go. Okay. Now Blackie has always been kind of resistant. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Carl! <laughs> Let's run around a bit. Oh, there we go. There's patches. <laughs> now they're going to display some little bit of dominance and show them who's the, who's the alpha. They're not doing too well. They're kind of running away. And Billy. <laughs> oh, the sneezing and the tongue out. What's with that? Hey. Oh, the sheep are going to check them out. All this excitement. Barry doesn't know what's going on. He's like, what? Barry! Barry! Hi! Oh, what's that? Hey! Okay, so. Uh, so I wanted to um, touch base on something else too that uh, came up uh, that I may not have, I don't think I have covered, is uh, the antlers. Antlers or uh, horns. I called them antlers in, a, I think, a Facebook post. Uh, correction, they're, they're horns, they're not antlers. Uh, now, <clears throat> debutting or removing the antlers. See, they work really good as, as a handle to grab a hold and to uh, move them around where you want them to. Now the concern is that they're going to use those and hurt people. But that's not really the case as long as they're, uh, they're brought up. Um, you know, and the fencing is another good reason. They can get caught in fencing. This fencing is pretty good. Chain link fence. Uh, and also giving them lots of space to run around. So, of course, if they don't have a lot of space, they're going to try to get out of the fence, kind of like Carl did with that area over there. He kind of broke that. He wanted to get in. So if the goats want to get out, they're going to play around with the fence. Now, the antlers, they, they work, come here, Patches. They work, uh, they're right into the skull. So what they do is they do, they've got um, blood flow that actually runs through these horns, and they're used to cool them in the uh, wintertime if they get too hot. So if you grab a hold of them in the summertime, or sorry, did I say winter? In the summertime to cool them. Uh, when you grab them in the summertime, you can actually feel they're warm. Uh, now, if you debud them or dehorn them when they're young, uh, can cause problems, uh, scurs 
on the uh, on the horn or on the uh, yeah I got that right the horn. Oh. And what happens is the males, which uh, Billy here's a boy, if you if you do them at the same time, you do them a little later, the boys tend to grow and mature a little bit more. Uh, so their, um, their, the bottom of their horn gets a little bit wider and it can be a little tricky to make sure that it's taken care of. Uh, so if it's not taken care of properly, you get a little piece of horn that starts to grow uh, and it can grow up and around and, and towards their eye or towards their, their back of their head. Uh, so it's a large problem. now. Mother Nature gave them horns for a reason, and there are some reasons, and this is uh, yet another one. <laughs> uh, they use the horns to play. Now, sheep have hard heads, <laughs> and um, if you have goats, especially with, with having a rescue, if you have some goats that have antler, oh, antlers, I wanna say antlers, horns, and other ones that don't, then the ones that don't are at a, a huge disadvantage. It's kind of like having a cat, uh, an indoor cat, uh, and then you remove the, you declaw them, and then you uh, put them outside, and then they fight other cats. Well, it's a, a huge disadvantage and um, isn't uh, recommended unless they are to remain inside. So we don't remove the horns uh, just because it's natural and there are reasons why they do have the horns. <laughs> You're goofy. Hey, what's with the tongue sticking out, bud? What do you think? <laughs> are you in with the girls? Oh boy. Hey? All right. So the ducks are over here. Uh, uh, Pekin ducks and the geese and they'll be going uh, into this building here. We're just kind of debating whether to have them uh, come in and out of this area and leave them out here. We want to make sure that they're in in a shelter when it is very cold, uh, minus 20 and below Celsius, uh, because they want to stay outside, but uh, it's just not safe. You want to make sure that, uh, you know, they're not going to uh, they're not going to freeze. But the Muscovy ducks, as you can see over in the chicken run, are in that area with the chickens and they will go inside the building. What's going on guys? Feed. Oh. So something else, we have an email that came in last night from an Allen down, I believe he's in Florida, and he bought a couple four month old, old turkeys and uh, you know liked Fernando and wanted to uh, have some Fernandos of his own. Uh, now what he did is he took them, my understanding he went down to his pond area uh, with uh, his ducks and he uh, let them go and of course they ran off into the bush. <laughs> so he realizes his mistake uh, but he asked us you know what should he have done. Uh, the best thing to do with any new animals like that are to uh, put them into a contained area to make sure that they know where home is. Now uh, it's kind of like if you take somebody uh, and you uh, steal them from somewhere and you bring them and you put them on your property they're probably going to run away and want to go back home. <laughs> but if they know that hey this ain't so bad of a place they're going to probably stick around. So, um, so make sure you contain them. And the guinea, if you've been watching the video in the past, the guinea that are in the back, now it's getting cold, but we had put them into our contained area, uh, which is over here. So we do have a couple spots. Uh, this one in the center here is completely enclosed. Uh, so you can't, uh, they can't get out. And then this area here <clears throat> is, uh, is just outside. That. So the ducks, the Pekin ducks, they can't fly anyway. So they can go into this area and not have to worry about them getting out. Guineas, unfortunately, they can jump out of here. So we had them in this area uh, for quite some time and now they're inside. So just make sure that when you're getting new birds that you, uh, you show them that, hey, uh, you're not so bad of a person and you're gonna feed them and take care of them well uh, before you uh, send them out. So it reminds me of somebody, uh, a video that I watched a while ago uh, from Justin Rhodes. Now he is a permaculture chicken, so permaculture is using animals to help uh, the land and help gardening. And what he did is he took a few guineas and he had them into a building 
uh, and uh, he left them in there I think for about two weeks uh, maybe not long enough and then he let them out and it was a big hunt for where they were he would uh, check out different episodes and, and find out where they were and I think eventually he lost all of them uh, so guineas uh, they do roam they do roam naturally even if they know where home is and we often find them all over the place uh, so they do come home to roost in the evening uh, but you just want to make sure they know uh, who's the hand that feeds them. <laughs> hey Barry, what is, what is that? <laughs> you like that? So next weekend, uh, Barack, Thistle and Clover are gonna go home. So Barack here, and the two baby doll sheep here. Uh, they're going home. Now we are expecting somebody and uh, here they are. So it is ducks, and uh, they're very friendly ducks, and apparently they tap on the window um, and they show their affection, but the ducks can show their affection in strange ways. Um, so the, um, they're a little concerned that they might be a little bit aggressive, and uh, they apparently have a long name. They both have really long names, but she goes out and she says, hey guys, so the ducks know uh, her as or know their names as hey and guys so we'll probably just call them hey guys <laughs> it's warm <laughs> so guess where they've been every day <laughs> so they've been they've been where on top, on top of the hot, hot tub, tub cover oh the hot tub warm. cover yeah look at the hearts yeah no, I <laughs> In the blankie. Yeah. That's you know what? Good for you though. Most people wouldn't even have wrapped them. Oh, I felt so bad. Yeah. I'm like, well, maybe in the truck? Yeah. Hi, guys. Hey, guys. Which one's high? Which one's bad? Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, yep. Oh, I wish you guys were nicer. <laughs> maybe they're just no, maybe they're just they're, too nice. You, you did your <laughs> job. You did it amazing. They are so friendly. Um, but understanding that when they are friendly, they they nip and they you know that's how. Which is they... okay if it was just us as adults. Yes. But, but when the, the kids, kids don't go out there because of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's too hard. So kudos. You did good. You just thanks. They're they're just really good. <laughs> Hay and guys just came in, as you saw, and we put them in with the other birds. So there's lots of talking going on. So here we go. This is Drake, the old boy. And um, out of the two two ducks, this one has curly head on it. So I think this one's Hay. And then this one's Guy, or Guys. <laughs> now, Guy is over talking with Hunter, which is the boy, and uh, this girl seems pretty, uh, pretty excited to see him. And these two here are having a chat. They're just talking about, you know, what's, uh, what's up with this place? What's happening? Who's the boss? And Drake's like, well, I'm the boss, so... <laughs> watch out uh, Hunter and him were kind of uh, having a little uh, talk about that before so we'll see how the pecking order goes it looks like uh, things are you know relatively uh, good so lots of talking going on and that's what Muscovies do oh what do you got there oh and Drake's like hey come on what's with the new guy eh Wow, look at all the talking. Oh, that's hilarious. Here are the little girls. So this we have Petunia. And we have Daisy. And we have Carly. And we have Coco. And Lucy. Now you'd never know. Lucy's like three, three and a half years old. She's pretty much, uh, I think she's the smallest one in here now. 
but she's got the most spunk, don't you, girl? And uh, these these girls are really filling out. Hey, what are you doing, Lucy? Hey, this is your winter spot. Now that Carl's out, you guys have to stay in. You can meet him uh, next year. You guys, you girls are too young, and then Lucy's just too small. Okay, so coming back, uh, where we got, where are the, oh, look, there they are. So here's Mama Hen and her two pea chicks. Now there is a woman that's interested in these, uh, these two chicks, and we said, well, we're going to uh, rehome them as a trio because, of course, uh, you don't want to separate the mom from the little ones. So they are about four hours away in uh, southwestern Manitoba. And uh, she was looking for some pea chicks. So those three will be uh, making arrangements. Hey, what do you think? Yeah. And Fernando. Oh, you're inside here. Are you the security? You're acting security? <laughs> and our cute little Julianne pig. Hey girl, so we got somebody interested in you as well, but you are an excellent little uh, little girl, very friendly, extremely friendly. Hey, what do you think? What do you think? That dirty nose, that dirty nose. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we are going to make sure that these Guineas don't get um, bugs. You want to make sure if they're inside that they don't get any kind of mites or anything. So we're going to give them an initial treatment of ashes. Uh, so this is their ash bath that Tara's laying out here. And with some diatomaceous earth we're going to put in there as well. All natural. And they're probably not going to bathe with us in here, so we'll probably have to go out and monitor them from out here. Hey girls, you girls going to watch too? Mark, film it. Yes. Oh. <laughs> All right. They're checking it out. Not quite sure. Here, let's... No. Looks like they wanted to check it out, but uh, they're not planning on bathing with us watching. So they want a little peace, a little privacy. All right. Carl, what's up? You figured you'd uh, time for uh, dinner, eh? Or lunch, I guess. You're all done your greetings? Everything's kind of back to normal. All the excitement's over. The boys are eating. All the boys are eating, actually. The girls are all hiding from and, and the girls are over by, by the girls. <laughs> uh, and you can really smell Carl. You can see here, see how dirty he is on the front? Just all dirty here. So what he does, he's nice and clean on the back end because what he does is he, he turns his head and he pees on his chin and on his neck. And you get that really musk smell, or urine smell, I guess. Um, and that's their perfume, that's what they use. So for the past month or so, when he's been in around with the girls, he has, hey Lambert, he has, uh, you get out of the car and you can just, you can smell it in the air. <laughs> so he, he looks much better in the, uh, summertime when he's separated from the girls. Now this pond it's going to eventually freeze. It's gone down substantially. All the ducks, lots of ducks this year. Uh, I think there's 32 waterfowl that we have there and most of them I think are actually I think all of them I think are in there now. So yeah they're going to go into that building and we'll bring out water for them uh, in the morning and in the evening 
Uh, and you don't want to give these guys too much water because they just like to play. Oh, look at all the roosters. The band of brothers. Where are they? Yeah, right there. <laughs> all hanging out together. <laughs> oh boy. The Bush Boys. So last weekend we had some visitors that came in and uh, of course Carl was in, uh, was not in with the girls at that time. He was on the other side of the fence. Lucy was on the opposite side of the fence, rubbing up against the fence, uh, taunting him. And uh, Carl was making all kinds of funky noises. Uh, so I want to cut to that. I'm going to use her video. I wanted to actually do a video myself. I uh, didn't get around to it and it was too dark since it's getting so dark uh, so early this time of year. And it's only going to get worse. So I'm going to cut to that footage right now just to give you an idea on what Carl was like before he came in uh, within the past week. <coughs> If you remember from last week's video, we had some animals that came in. So we had a, uh, a goose that came in that was, well, we actually went and picked up the goose on the highway. Uh, then we had a pig that came in. It looks like one of our Juliana painted pigs from last summer. And uh, that was dropped off by, uh, by a couple who found the pig up just north of the city of Winnipeg. Um, so we weren't able to get in contact with the owners on that and um, it looks like it's a surrender situation so we're going to put her up for uh, adoption but we have somebody uh, in mind um, that before we even made that decision uh, to, to put her back up for adoption that uh, uh, they wanted they wanted her so it looks like she's going to be going soon and then uh, this guy who uh, the one horned the one horned goat so he is uh, he's going to be going to a sanctuary just south of us, down towards Steinbach, Manitoba. Uh, so he'll, uh, he should fit right in there. So he'll be going, I believe, tomorrow. He is heading off. Uh, tomorrow morning, I think he is. Uh, he's going to be picked up. Then they're going to take him to their vet uh, just to get him a once over and make sure everything's good and then he'll be put in there. So that's the update on the animals uh, that came in last week. So I'm back in the house and I just wanted to show you this. Tara has been working with uh, something she's calling Nature's Craft House that we're going to run every Sunday. So these guys here, uh, she had picked these framing up at uh, Dollarama uh, we want to actually get a laser cutter and start cutting these things out on our own. Uh, but it just had synthetic material. So guess what it, we replaced it with? You're right. We replaced it with uh, turbos and uh, Tinkers and Lambert's wool. So that gives it just that extra little bit of a touch and there's so much cuter with actual real wool. <laughs> so uh, the other thing that we have is Tiana over the past number of years has been doing um, peacock jewelry. So she takes and she actually makes this jewelry uh, and puts them into earrings different styles of earrings and brooches and things of that nature uh, and even the fluffy fluffy white ones. Um, so we're gonna do a bunch of that kind of stuff and um, get together like we did with the carding, the wool carding. And we're gonna do that every Sunday, I think 12 to three. Uh, Tara's been picking up a few extra things like these spinning wheels. There's one, a bunch of crafting material here. Um, my, my computer area is starting to get uh, cut out and, and dwindled down. Uh, and then another wheel here. And there's the wheel from the carding video that we did. 
So here's uh, wool down here that uh, hasn't been carded yet. This has been carded. And there's just all kinds of different fun things going on here. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Lots going on here at the Ten Acre Woods. Winter is setting in, uh, so we're uh, getting ready to stay inside and do a little bit more uh, things inside. So I thank you for watching, and until next week, have a wonderful week. Take care. Bye-bye.